We're going to be starting off the show today talking about the matchup between the Oklahoma City Thunder and the Dallas Mavericks. We saw the Thunder, who were very slight favorites in this series, put together a very convincing win last night. 117-95 was the final score. The Mavericks were in this game for a while here, but it was really, you know, in that second half in the fourth quarter in particular where they were able to pull away. We saw Jalen Williams, who didn't have necessarily a great game as a whole, just absolutely come to life in that fourth quarter. He scored 10 straight points for the Thunder and helped put them uh, ahead and out of reach of the Dallas Mavericks in this game. So, I want to sort of start by actually looking at the Mavericks side of this because th I think that the biggest takeaway from this game is the fact that it is very clear that Luka Doncic is not fully healthy. And this is something that as we've known since that Clippers series and has been talked about, but he at least put up the point totals to sort of subdue the conversation as much as possible but he is just clearly not right physically he's dealing with that knee injury and as a result we've seen some pretty horrendous shooting performances from him frankly where especially from the three-point line he is absolutely struggling now still averaging 28 points per game which again you know you don't necessarily hear all too many people talking about the struggles he's going through because ultimately the counting stats are there for him averaging 28 9 and 8 but if you watch these games he is clearly not comfortable he's relying a lot on an outside shot that has just not been there for him he is shooting 22.7 percent from three also under 40 percent from the field as well and it is clear that if the Mavericks are going to try and, you know, pull off some type of run, they need the most from their stars. And we've seen Kyrie Irving have a lot of really impressive performances for them, especially in some of the second halves against the Clippers last round. But Luka's not fully right, and I don't know if the... Mavericks necessarily have enough around him to pull off this type of, you know, call it an upset if you want. These are two, you know, very evenly matched teams, but the reality is I think the Mavericks are dealing with some really crucial injuries. Maxi Kleba isn't a name that's necessarily going to grab a lot of, you know, casual fans as somebody that could be a massive miss missing piece for them, but he obviously separates his shoulder in game six early on in that matchup and he is out indefinitely very likely that he may not be returning in this playoffs as a whole they would likely have to advance to the next round anyways to even get him back and <clears throat> for the Mavericks again I do like some of the flexibility that they have specifically at the wings and with the bigs in terms of different looks they can throw out to opposing teams but without Kleba it their three-point shooting absolutely takes a hit because he was shooting the ball extremely well for them he was providing some of these small ball looks for them uh, when they needed to but also throwing him at the four at times and trying to run a little bit of a bigger lineup and when it comes to the Thunder here they do sort of need to be able to rely on that bench unit because of the fact that the Thunder are a very deep team and we saw that last night huge credit to uh Ant Aaron Wiggins, that is, almost said Andrew, his brother, of course, but Aaron Wiggins, one of the more underrated players in the NBA. I really like the one-two punch that comes off the bench between him and Isaiah Joe, and last night they combined for 22 points, and they just do such a good job for the Thunder in terms of coming in providing an extra layer of scoring. The Thunder never really have to worry about a dip-off, and typically that's what happens when you have some of these younger teams, and we'll see maybe when they are tested more against a higher-level team on the road if it is still going to be quite as reliable. <clears throat> but 
last night they were able to do so. And for the Mavericks, I just I do really worry about them in terms of if Luka isn't feeling it, they I don't really know what they have to necessarily lean on. And Kyrie is absolutely one of the best Robins in the NBA in terms of being a number two option and being able to carry the load at times. But they're already so centric around those two players. And again, I like a lot of the supplementary pieces that they have, but it requires a lot of Luka and Kyrie creation to make the most out of those pieces. They really don't have a backup point guard to try and sort of carry any of those expectations or keep the offense flowing and the it's interesting I'm not exactly sure how Jason Kidd is going to manage the lineups going forward last night seemed like an exa a perfect example of where they would have needed Maxi Kleba because of the fact that it was in the fourth quarter they were down about 15 points and were trying to sort of maximize that one last run to pull themselves back into the game and they were Running without a five, P.J. Washington was at the sort of de facto five spot because of the fact that they felt like they needed offense, at least that's what I'm assuming was the thought process behind Jason Kidd. So the lineup was Luka, Kyrie, it was um, Tim Hardaway Jr., and then it was Derek Jones Jr. and P.J. Washington. And, you know, Tim Hardaway Jr., it's hard to sort of dump on him because this was his first game back from injury. He had sprained his ankle in game two, I believe, of that Clippers series. But he gave them absolutely nothing last night. I'm surprised they ran with him as much as they did last night. He got 17 minutes, 1 of 5 from the field, 0 of 4 from 3. So it's not like he was providing them very much anyways. But they felt like they needed spacing and scoring. But... It was also clear on the defensive end at that point that they were missing a big man. And I know that Kleba isn't necessarily any type of defensive anchor, but he's at least a little bit more size to throw at the Thunder. And that's when we saw a lot of the Jalen Williams driving at the rim. And some of his finishes were just... There wasn't much that he could do. Gafford might have been in for one of those finishes where it seemed almost impossible for him to get the layup to fall, but it was high off the glass at an off angle out to the right, and <clears throat> it was a great finish for him there. But then we also saw him take P.J. Washington off of the dribble when he was in the corner, and there was just no real reinforcements in the paint, so it was an easy dunk for Jalen Williams there. And I'm just not really sure what this closing group is going to look like, because it does feel like we saw at times the Mavericks were having a lot of success with those double big lineups of having... Of course, Luca Kyrie, Derek Jones Jr., and then it was Kleba in one of the other centers. But in game two as well, they were closing that game with Kleba just running the five and having this five out offense that anybody can hurt you from the perimeter and nobody can get exposed so much defensively. Now, again, you're losing a little bit of paint protection there. I believe that the Thunder are a much better team driving than the Clippers are, so I'm not even saying that even if they had Kleba that this is a one series for them, but I do feel like it was an impactful loss, and I think that the Mavericks are in real trouble in this type of a game. I also, on the side of the Oklahoma City Thunder, because I feel like I'm being a little bit negative on the Mavericks right now, definitely want to give the Thunder their credit, and I feel like I've tried to over the past few weeks, but this is a team that was definitely sort of going under the radar headed into the postseason, and the youth conversation absolutely is a talking point because it is true that in NBA history, we typically see these young cores end up dealing with some type of heartbreaking loss before they're actually able to make that jump. And, you know, heartbreaking doesn't even necessarily have to be so dramatic about it. But 
you sort of have to suffer your loss before you know what it takes almost and it's a mentality thing it feels like and the Thunder just don't care they were the youngest team in NBA history to ever win a playoff series when they swept the Pelicans we already knew they were the youngest number one seed ever in the NBA playoffs as well headed in anyways and now we are sort of sitting here round two and the wagon moves on here. They've won five straight games and they are just playing absolutely tremendous. I didn't even think that this was necessarily the best version of what we can see from the Thunder. Like I mentioned, Jalen Williams, he was struggling for the first three quarters, I'd call it, of this game, at least offensively. Um, he was 2 of 11 from the field up until that point where he scored 10 straight for them. But it uh, we saw, again, Jalen Williams struggling a little bit offensively. I didn't even think that Lou Dort was necessarily the full version of what we can get. We saw him be an absolute shutdown perimeter defender last series against Brandon Ingram. I know that he was matched up against Luka in this game, but it seemed like it was more so about Luka just not being healthy than it was Lou Dort actually making plays. We saw Doncic sort of in the less explosive plays going into the post, getting a couple baskets on Lou Dort, but I think there is another level that we could see from him. I've done this whole segment, and I haven't talked about Shade Gilgis Alexander yet, and that's just because he is one of the most steady stars that we have in the NBA today, that he just continues to go out there. He doesn't necessarily, you know, I mean, he definitely has gotten his share of love from the media over the past couple years. He was All-NBA first team last year, and he's going to be All-NBA first team again this season as well. So everybody's aware of how good he is, but that's the thing is it almost felt like a quiet game for him, and yet he still had 29 points, 9 assists, and 9 rebounds. So he's just a tremendous talent, and... This cohesive unit that the Thunder have going on, I just feel like they are... De it's so fun to see because, again, I love their team defense. And also, on the note of defense, I know that OKC ends up putting, putting 117 on the board, but I did feel like there were a lot of positives from the Mavericks that you do feel like you could work off of a little bit. Um, the help defense was absolutely tremendous. They were not allowing anything easy in the paint for the Thunder. I, you saw at times, um, especially with some of their guards kind of getting beat off the dribble in some of these initial situations, but the rotations of their other players was really impactful. I thought that Daniel Gafford was actually tremendous in this game. Now, was dealing with a little bit of foul trouble early, and again, the level of offense that he brings is good but doesn't necessarily you know isn't a go-to guy that you can put him you know back to the basket get you a bucket he's more of a lob threat and again last night you know he scores 16 points so I the, the whole reason I'm saying this I thought he was really good and really impactful on the defensive end ends up with five blocks but it's not even just that it was turning the thunder away from the paint on a handful of these instances final note here while we're sort of talking about defense as well is you know from the thunder like i said i feel like they can sort of take their game to another level i feel like the giddy minutes are going to be interesting here because of the fact that we saw and last night we saw him play just 17 minutes and it's because of the fact that for gafford being the sort of defensive anchor in the paint that he is you want if you're the thunder you want to be able to drag him out of the paint and open up those lanes and a lot of the time when Gafford was playing these minutes he was matched up against Josh Giddy because of course Chet Holmgren can absolutely shoot last night he was two of five from three I thought that he did a couple nice things off the dribble as well uh, working in the mid-range and definitely taking advantage of opportunities when he could in the paint when we saw that Gafford wasn't in there. I thought that SGA also did a really good job of that. There were a couple times where he pushed in transition when he saw that Gafford was sort of trailing behind 
and just understanding that that is a, you know, and Derek Lively is definitely a candidate for first team all rookie. That's where I had him, but definitely looked a little bit like a rookie last night. There were just some instances where it seemed like he wasn't necessarily um, mentally at the level of the Thunder, who are this very, when they want to be fast paced team, they move the, the ball around a lot. And it seemed like Lively just sort of got caught up in his head a little bit. He had a defensive three-second violation. He, at one point, just lost track of the shot clock in general. Uh, he had a horrible turnover trying to come off of a roll and kick it to the perimeter. And he just threw it straight into the stands. So, you know, Lively is somebody that... Great building block for Dallas. But it does feel like, you know, the game was just moving very fast for him last night. And... I think that there's a lot of mismatch issues here. So I am worried for the Mavericks. I initially had Thunder coming out of this series in six. Gonna, It's going to be up to Luka whether or not he is at least healthy enough to be a big-time contributor because, again, what we've seen from him so far in this postseason is absolutely not what we are used to. But let us know what you think about this game in and series in the comments section. We're now going to be taking our first break of the show, and when we come back on the other side, I want to dive into the other NBA matchup from last night in the Celtics and Cavaliers and talk a little bit big picture for the Celtics as they look to bring home the championship. So we will be right back. Stick with us.